Hi guys, so today we are making the most basic of Chinese recipes and that is scallion pancakes. And I realized I hadn't done one in about two years now and the, the recipe itself, the ingredients is just about five ingredients total. But if you learn to make it well, you get your techniques and you, you learn to make this well, this can be really a, a recipe in your repertoire that you can be really proud of. So I'm going to show you guys that today. You can make it, you know, all ahead of time and freeze it. It is really a great recipe. So I hope you guys all enjoy. So we're going to start this recipe off with the dough. And for scallion pancakes, it is a semi-hot water dough. So I have some flour, some salt, recipe is going to be down below, and I'm pouring in 100 milliliters of hot boiling water. And what that water essentially does is it, it kills, it cooks off some of that flour so that it is easier to roll later. You'll see it a lot with flatbread recipes. That's why the texture is a little bit more like a cracker versus a bread. And that is what hot water doughs do. But like I said, it is a semi hot water dough. So for the rest of the water, we're just going to use room temperature. And that way you get a little bit of cracker, but a little bit of fluffiness like normal bread. So just mix that together and I'm going to try to get it into a smoother ball of dough before I put it out on my kneading board. So don't let the editing process fool you because even getting it into a ball of dough took about three to four minutes. And now what I'm going to do is to turn this rough ball of dough, as you guys have seen, into a smooth ball of dough. And that requires seven to eight minutes of kneading. And you can see what I'm doing right now is stretching out the dough, bringing it back, and then doing that over and over again. And what that does is it helps develop the gluten. It makes the dough stronger so that later on when we do roll it out, it does not tear. So now we're going to let the dough rest for about an hour with some oil on it so that it does not dry out. Because after you work the dough so hard and so long, it becomes really tough and then you can't really roll it out afterwards. So just put that aside and then we will prepare our scallions.
Okay, so for about medium-sized scallion pancakes, I'm dividing the dough up into five, and then using my fingers to just push and shape them into rectangles, because that is eventually the shape that I am going to roll them into. And what I'm also going to do is to pour about one teaspoon of vegetable oil onto each piece. And what that will do is it will help relax the dough some more, but it's also going to function as the oil layer that separates our scallion pancakes. You'll see what I mean later, because we're gonna kind of do sort of like a croissant thing where we have a layer of dough, a layer of oil. So just do that first. Now, see how that dough is stretching but not tearing? And that is because we spent a good 10 minutes kneading it before to really develop that gluten, make that dough strong for now. So I am rolling it out to about an 11 inch wide rectangle by let's say like seven inches or so. It doesn't need to be too exact. And this just preps us up for the traditional scallion pancake roll up method. So usually a light sprinkling of salt along with scallions go onto this. And um, I like to put in a little bit of five spice as well. And you can or you don't have to um, according to your tastes. But be careful when you're putting in scallions because if you put too much, it tries to break through the dough and that's not really fun. So this method of rolling up scallion pancakes is, is just how you do the Chinese version one. It's always been done uh, like this. And when you roll it up like that, you are creating layers. It is a bit of lamination going on. You have the oil that you've spread on before. And as you roll it, you get a layer of oil, a layer of dough, a layer of oil, a layer of dough. So that when you fry it up, this thing puffs up and gets nice and light, but also with crispy little layers in between. So after you roll it up like this, you have kind of worked it a little too much to roll it out. So just leave it onto the side and we will roll it out once we have finished all of the scallion pancakes.
after a brief rest, I would carefully roll it out into about one eighth of an inch. You don't want to be too rough uh, with this dough. And I really like it because you can all see the, uh, the layers and the spiral as well, which will be really pretty when it fries up in the skillet. So remember at the beginning how I said you could make all of this ahead of time. So the way that I would do it is to put it in between two sheets of parchment and then just freeze it in your freezer. And when you want to make it again, just take it straight from the freezer onto the skillet. You don't have to defrost it. So the amount of oil to use is up to you. I myself hate frying in my house because it just stinks up the whole place. But I will have to say, if you want the restaurant style scallion pancakes that are a little bit more fluffy, you do have to fry in a little bit uh, more oil. But you know, that being said, you could dry fry this as well, but more oil is going to help those layers separate um, as well. So I just fry this over medium to medium high heat for two minutes each side and then I flip it back and forth in between until I get that nice uniform uh, dark golden brown color that I want. And then I will drain it onto a paper towel to take away any excess oil. Jeez, that is so pretty. I love how you can see the spiral and the layers in it. And this is such a great recipe. There's only a few ingredients, but if you learn to do the method well, you'll never view scallion pancakes the same way again. You will always be making it at home and you know, this will be right at your fingertips. Anyways, I will have that dipping sauce recipe down below as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I, I love it and it was about time that I redid one of these classics. As usual, if you want to see more recipes like this, which I know you do, please hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you guys all again next time. Bye!